Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us at Andromeda's Edge. I'm here with Luke Laurie and Maximus Laurie. I'm Peter Vaughn from Cardboard Alchemy, and we are presenting this game to you. We've got an exciting battle. These two designers are going head to head to show us who's the best in, at the edge. Um, we're excited that you're here uh, to look at the campaign. Uh, this will give you that insight to the gameplay. In addition to that, we've got another uh, a couple content creators. We're hoping we'll talk about these two players and actually tell you how they should have played, which will be fun as well. But these two know the game really well. Um, Luke and Maximus, why don't you tell us about who you've chosen to represent you today in this final battle? Well, um, I'm going to play the Dark Star Acolytes, and I, I don't think I've played Andromeda's Edge on camera before, so I'm probably <laughs> going to make some mistakes today. And um, Is that the Dark Star MO, we, you know, just like self-deprecating? Yeah, the commentators are probably going to correct my every move, but uh, essentially what I'm looking at is in playing the Dark Star Acolytes, I have the ability to um, use uh, a ghostly presence to activate one of the Alliance bases on my return to station turns. And uh, that basically gives me a free turn every once in a while if I'm careful about how I prepare for that. Nice. So we'll, we'll see if I, if I prepare for that well. Who can stop the Dark Star Acolytes, Maximus? I'm playing the uh, Zodian Warmongers. I have Battle Rage, meaning that when I enter battle, I gain two energy, uh, which can contribute to my dice or can be used for other purposes. And nice. then... <clears throat> I can also discard my diplomacy cards because I'm not very diplomatic, and then I'll just draw two more <laughs> tactics cards. Tactics cards are good. All right, so we're gonna see what happens. We've got this 1v1. I think it'll help everyone who's at home thinking about, well, what would a two-player be like? Sometimes games feel like they're built for four, but this is a game actually built by these two people to be great at two also. All right, thank you all, and let's, let's game on. All right, let's play Andromeda's Edge, Maximus. Sounds good. I think my uh, Dark Star Acolytes are going to be taking down your Zodian Warmonger, so let's, uh, let's figure out what we're doing here. So, so first uh, we got to roll off to determine turn order. Right. And this works just like battle dice, so we're going to roll against each other here. Uh, six, six, four. Six, five. Two sixes beat six, five. We compare the highest dice and go on down the line. And that means you're going first. You get one victory point, I get two victory points. And now we gotta size up the situation. So, where are you gonna go first? So it's my first launch. I see there's a moon with two ice on it. I'm gonna launch to that planet and take the action and collect that moon. What? That was the only place on the board that had two resources on a moon and you snag it. You're also far away from the raiders so they don't strike. I'm gonna take a quick look at my tactics cards and see what I have up my sleeve before I get too close. So, I've got a lot of different options and some of them involve me diving in and grabbing some modules right away. And that's what I'm gonna go for. So, I'm gonna drop into the Maximus Field. I wonder why it's called the Maximus Field. It's a good name. Yeah, and okay. I got my leader. Oh, this is my leader. I recruit my action. leader and I put it in my leader place. And this is um, one of the module fields. So we have to tick up the uh, event marker that will lead us to events. And I'm going to be selecting modules from the science and industry modules over there. And down here at my resources, I have two carbon and I have one titanium. I have an ice energy and my cards are also resources. So looking at the costs over here, I think one of these that'd be really fantastic would be getting free repairs repeatedly. So if I spend two carbon, I can get the Damcon Autobots and that's for damage control. And then if I spend a titanium and one other resource like an energy, I can get the Sky Crane. All right, so I'm getting the Sky Crane and the Damcon Autobots. And these resources get returned to the supply. And I get to move up some tracks. 
So I'm gonna be moving up the science track. That exclamation point means we trigger the event track again. And I move up the industry track. So I moved up science and industry. I take my modules and I'm going to put them in my station. I put the science module in the science row, the industry module in the industry row, and neither of these comes damaged. Some modules come damaged, so I think I am done. I'm too far away from the raiders, so they don't strike. Your turn. Your next ship has to be placed within range of your previously placed ship. Right, uh, I'm gonna take another launch turn. However, before I do that, I'm gonna discard a diplomacy tactics card in order to draw two tactics cards. I'll get you those. Not a fan Thank of diplomacy, you. huh? And that is a once per turn free action. Uh, launch turn. I think I'm going to play to my faction and launch to the Maximus field where you already are. Hmm. That ticks up the event track. Gotcha. One space. I'll collect a leader as a free action. We're already one away from an event. And I'll buy two modules. Carbon, ice, or excuse me, energy, titanium, energy. I'm going to take the two cheapest modules, one science, one industry. Add those to my tableau. Bump up my tracks. Um, I get an upgrade since I started on that track. I'm going to take the Deathclaw Fighter, which then gives me the fighter uh, ship. And then a fight is triggered. I choose to escalate first, and right. I do. So this is battle now. You're, we're going through the phase of battle. You're escalating and moving your ship in. Um, I don't have any ships to escalate. And now we uh, pass to, to my diplomacy. I'm going to mm. not play a diplomacy card. I'm going to play a diplomacy card. I'm going to start off strong here with outnumbered and outgunned. If uh, an opponent has more ships than I do in the active region, I get to advance one space on the supremacy track. Mm, right. So then that does not end the battle, right? So we pass on to battle preparations. Correct. We're moving on to battle. During my battle preparations, because of my battle fury faction effect, I gain two energy. Hmm. Your I, battle I don't have that ability. <laughs> uh, all I've got is... This is the tutorial, how to beat the Dark Star. I have fear. Um, let's see, what could I do? I don't want to go down without swinging. I'm going to throw in one energy, so I can divert energy to weapons. So I spend one energy to give me one extra weapons uh, for a total of two. Okay, I'm going to spend all three of mine for a total what? of five. What? All right, I guess I'll just roll out here like you are in the depths of space. Six, two. Six, five, four. Uh, six, five beats six, two. All right, um, the results of battle. My ship is damaged and goes to the scrapyard. Okay, you gain your tactical ops. My tactical operations means that I'm gonna draw a tactics card. I am the victor and I advance on the supremacy track one space. That causes an event. All right, so the event goes off at the end of your turn and we also need to bring out a new region. At this time, region. I bring out the new region. Mm-hmm. Okay, a new region. This needs moons. Gets moons on it. And so we got to the end of the track. It, and I'll declare the end of my turn. So let's take a look at the event. We are scoring industry. Welcome to the fleet. Um, okay, so we score industry minus damaged modules. And so we look at our positions on the industry track. Looks like you're ahead of me, you're on seven, but you have a damaged module. So you're gonna gain six victory points. And I'm on six, but I don't have any damaged modules, so I gain six. Then uh, we bring out Raider Type A. So Raider Type A is this one right here, which is the Corrigan Smugglers. So we already have on the board Vorticon Strikers. So now we have Vorticon Strikers and the Corrigan Smugglers. Um, it begins in the Trade Hub. 
and these are the Corrigan smugglers and the trade hub is right over here. Now they're, I would say they're not a tough opponent, but in the last game we played, they they put up some good fights. Yeah. And uh, they do have shields, so they'll survive a hit. And um, they have a special effect, which is they're smuggling in parts to help you build developments. And that means that your developments are one resource cheaper. That's for both of us. Okay, and now it's your turn. Oh, we missed the oh, special, special effect. effect. Each player may build one ship of their choice at no cost or gain two titanium. Mm. I'm going to take two titanium. I'm going to take a ship of my choice, which is a heavy cruiser. Um, if you're going to be all scary and attack like um, warmongers, I'm going to have to defend myself. So I take a free heavy cruiser. Okay, all right. then it's your turn. So that was the end of your turn, and then we reset the event marker. And now I have to plot my revenge. Ah, <sighs> so I did a great job building my engine, spending those resources, and now I have no resources. So I think it's time to take my new and precious heavy cruiser and go to this planet here, which looks like Dune, I think, and I'm gonna take a Alliance credit moon and drop it right there in my supply. All right, I'm done. All right, for my turn, I'm gonna launch my Deathclaw fighter to this science planet. I'm going to collect the carbon moon. I draw in this Vorticon striker. Um, and then we have a battle triggered and we go to escalation. I am going to escalate. And that's your choice first. And then it passes to you. All right. That is a scary group of warmongers. And my heavy cruiser is going to observe from far, <laughs> far away. Okay. So then it goes to my diplomacy. Um, and I'm going to pass, and then it goes to my battle prep, and I gain two energy. Um, I'm going to spend zero energy during battle prep. I roll four dice. Now, this is where targeting comes in. You have three ships. Plus two targeting. Oh, so, so the death claw dice. gives you a bonus on targeting, so you get three plus two. So I have four dice, and they're all going to be five or, or higher. That's so cheating. All right. The so two dice for the striker. The poor striker. Don't always feel sorry for the Raiders, but in this circumstance. I rolled a six. The six already beats it. And the so you would normally just keep rolling until you got fives or higher, but you already beat it. Yeah. Okay. So you clobber that poor Vorticon striker and that gives you um, the reward for beating it on the card as you get a tactics card. You also climb the Supremacy track, and it looks like that gets you to the Supremacy token. What's that one do? This Supremacy token is uh, discard as a free action, draw two tactics cards, gain two victory points. Okay. Um, also, as a free action, I'm going to discard a Diplomacy card to draw two tactics cards. I'm going to look for a tactics card to play. I'm going to play Stealth Maneuver. Uh, play on any player's turn. Move a ship from your launch bay to a planet. This is not a launch. What? How about... Um, hmm. I feel like this is going to be a short game. How about now? here? Ah, look at that. Hmm. Let me, let me re retract that, actually. Mm -hmm. How about... Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, maybe that one actually. Hmm. And then I declare the end of my turn. This is just discarded. Okay. You coming over to those planets kind of messes with my plans a little bit. I, I don't know. I feel a little fear next to this giant fleet you have. 
and your transports have a range of one. So if I went and engaged that transport, you couldn't get to me with anything except for that fighter. Except for the best fighter. Which is a scary fighter. And the Corrigan smuggler would be drawn in. Uh, I just feel like there's no safe move for me right now with warmongers on the march. So maybe, maybe I will just quietly go get a carbon over from this moon and hope that you leave me alone for a little longer. Okay, my turn. Shh, you didn't see me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was your version of stealth maneuver? Uh, um, so I don't have any ships in my launch base, so I'm gonna return to station. Oh, nice. I'm gonna leave transports on the planets where I am. Leave Andromeda, leave us. So I'm gonna pull back the death claw and activate my primary reactor, I think. Uh, no, that's all right. I've got the energy. I actually hold just the one energy. I'm going to perform a repair at the shipwright. I'm going to slot a moon in my industry modules. I'm going to spend an energy. Ooh, that's kind of pricey. That won't work. You don't have any more energy. Hmm. I'm going to discard this card to draw two cards. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm having tableau difficulties. Thank you. Hmm, what to do here? So I'll take a repair and then I'll pull back and take a credit. And then I'll pull back and develop. So I'm gonna spend a credit and a carbon in the form of this moon. So I'll start a little moon discard somewhere. Hmm. Put it right here. So that's the two carbon, the price to develop here. I take an observatory and put it on top of my transport in that planetary region. I take a leader from my station and put it in the observatory. And then I take an observatory card. So the instructions on the observatory card, I first gain a science track boost. I'm pink. So we move that there. That bumps the event track up one step. Slow down, did you pay to build this thing? I spent a credit and a carbon in the form of a moon, which is now, where I started the moon Now, the discard. smugglers are out here and they have discount goods for building developments, did you? That's a great point. So I think I'm gonna hold on to that credit. So you only had to pay one carbon instead of two carbon to build the observatory. All right, great. So now you score it up. You moved up on the science track and now you get to score for your leaders? Yeah, and we need to Advance the event track one okay, step. Okay, advancing it one step. Now to score this, it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven leaders in the region and adjacent regions. Okay, so you get seven VP. Seven plus seven is 14. And then finally, this card can be used as a free action, which I'm gonna go ahead and do now. I flip over the card and I take a discovery token. All right, so that observatory allows you to get a free discovery token, but then you keep the card because it scores at the end of the game. I keep that card. Hmm, I gotta come up with something clever. You seem to have all the cool moves. And that is the end of my turn. Well, I must say that that is very impressive. Um, and I enjoyed earlier when you did that stealth move because it gave me some ideas that maybe I should do my own stealth maneuver. And um, it says, play on any player's turn. I play this at the end of your turn and I stealth move my transport onto that icy planet. You might be wondering why I would visit that icy planet. And the answer is because the Dark Star Acolytes can use their ghostly presence to take a free action at the beginning of their return to station. So what I'm going to do is, I have no ships in my launch bay, I can use an unoccupied Alliance base and perform its action as if I played a ship there, and then regroup. And so, we pretend like my ghostly ship is over here in the development office, scooping up my leader, 
and using the develop action to build a city right there on that icy planet. Can you hand me a city and a city card? Now, I wouldn't normally be able to do this, but because the smugglers are in play, it's discounted. I can spend an ice and I can spend my credit moon as a credit and credits are wild for ice. And I can build this city on ice like so. And it is led by these three brave leaders out here on the edge. And um, so I'm gonna do just like what you did, which is I'm gonna score it by moving up the appropriate track, which is civilization in this case. And then I'm going to score based on leaders here and adjacent, which looks like six leaders yep. there. I see six. And that puts me to 14 victory points. We are tied again. And I noticed you used your ability right away on your card. I could do that too, couldn't I? And mine allows me to get a free module. And because this is my return to station, it means I could use that module right away too. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my city, flip it and get a free module, which will be an industry module, the ice extractor. And it is the cheapest one, but it's the one I want the most. So I'm gonna add that to my station and I'm going to advance one space on the industry track. Now, that puts me at the position on industry where I gain a ship upgrade and I will gain my ship, the Prophet, which is my special science vessel. And I get that ship and that's gonna be used later. Then I'm gonna go ahead, you can move down those industry modules and load up the new ones. I'm gonna go ahead and use my tableau now. And I'm gonna pull back first my transport and activate my primary reactor, which gives me two energy. Now then the other ones, the Damcon Autobots, they allow me to perform a free repair. I don't have any damaged modules, but I have a damaged ship over here. So I'm gonna slide that ship into the repair barge and then I can use it to activate a module. So I will pull it back also. And before I activate this, I'm gonna be slotting this carbon moon right there, which gives me two victory points. And I'm gonna play on the sky crane, which you're gonna enjoy this too. Uh, you get a free titanium, I get two titanium. But I also get a victory point. Then I can use ships or energy to continue activating my modules. I can use energy to activate the industry modules, or I could use a ship to activate any of the others. I think what I'm gonna do is use the heavy cruiser and activate my treasury and get a credit. Credits are wild and really useful. And I'm going to take one energy and activate my ice extractor. That gives me an ice, but it also allows me to get the benefit of the moon slotted between them, the two that I've activated already, which gives me a carbon. I'm gonna to choose to skip using my ship right this time around and I'm gonna call it done. I'm gonna move back my heavy cruiser and my other ships and discard my used up energy. And I believe that's my turn. That's my return to station. I do you like them apples? Not bad. Uh, I should have discarded this at the end of last turn. There's a hand size of five. So now I hold five cards. Nice. Um, I'm going to use my faction power to discard a diplomacy card to draw two tactics cards. I will launch a transport to the Maximus field, which ticks up the event track. I'm going to buy two uh, industry modules. That's going to require three energy and one other resource. I'm going to use an excess card for that. Oh, 
so, sorry. So that's four resources total, three titanium, one card. I gain two industry modules and put them into my tableau. I move up two spaces on the industry track, which moves the event marker one more time, and then I get an upgrade. Another ship upgrade, huh? What are you gonna get this time? I'm going to take the Lunar Explorer Science Vessel. Lunar Explorer. All right, so now we both have Science Vessels, which changes everything because Science Vessels can both go into the nebula. Hmm. And that is all. I see a lot of great stuff in the nebula and great opportunities, and we're right next to an event triggering, and I should be able to look into the future and go into the alternate dimensions over here. So I'm actually gonna go into the nebula. I'm gonna rescue my two leaders that are over there, recruit. I'm gonna take this uh, moon token, that's a credit and a victory point. And then I get an opportunity to look at the next two events. So I've got two events and I can decide which one is more to my advantage. Okay, so I'm gonna put this one on the top and this one on the bottom of the event deck. <coughs> now, I moved right next to the Corrigan Smugglers. Corrigan Smugglers now strike at me and I have to defend myself. So, it's escalation. You're not on the board, so I don't think you're gonna be escalating. Are you I am on the board, but I am too far away. Oh yeah, so you are. And I'm not gonna do anything mm. tricky to join. Okay, I am not going to play um, any diplomacy cards. I'm gonna go with what I've got. The Prophet only has uh, two weapons. I could spend an energy to give it three, or I could just accept the Prophet's fate. Well, the Prophet is okay with being destroyed because of its power. It's kind of okay with it. It kind of doesn't want to be destroyed, but I'm going to accept whatever destiny has in store for us. Two dice versus three. Four, three. Five, three. I lose. Okay, my science vessel goes into the scrapyard and I get to draw a tactics card because of tactical operations, and my turn is complete. All right. I will launch the Lunar Explorer with the Voyage Effect to the Nebula. I'm going to where I have two leaders from the start of the game, put those in my station as a free action, take the moon, powerful Nebula moon, then I use the Lunar Explorer special effect when you claim a moon with this ship, you may immediately gain the benefit of the token without discarding it. That gives me a credit and an energy. I also get to look at the top two event cards. Uh, you're probably going to mess with my... It's possible. You're going to meddle with my meddling. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and put this one on top and this one on the bottom. And that's my turn. No Raider Strike. Okay, I take my transport, and I don't have any ships on the board anymore, so this is another first launch. I can go to any unoccupied region, so I'm gonna go and get that precious repair moon. Pres those repairs are so good. And I'm done. Um, I'm gonna take a launch turn, and I'm gonna play Ace Pilot to uh, use the jump ability at no cost with this launch. Mm. So I launch a transport with jump to this other science planet. I'm gonna take this beefy moon. Uh, my card is discarded. Uh, and that's it. Okay. Mm. Got a couple of cool choices here, but I'm not sure how long I wanna hang on to them. You changed the event potentially right there, so I don't know if I want that to happen. Um, I think time has come to jump the ship. And so I'm gonna be jumping my heavy cruiser using its jump ability, spending one energy, and I'm gonna jump all the way across to the development office. That will trigger the ability to build a development, which I can do so at a discount, and I can spend an ice, a carbon, 
and a titanium, three resources. I'll take the one discount and not have to pay the gold or credit that is. And can you hand me an obelisk and an obelisk card, please? So I have a leader, takes control of the obelisk and I build my obelisk on my transport and then I score up the card. So I'm gonna advance on the supremacy track. Oh, there it is. There's the event right there. This is gonna trigger the event at the end of my turn. And that means we need to bring out a region. So here's the region. And it's another um, red planet. Okay. Now my obelisk is gonna score one for each leader in this region and adjacent. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight victory points for all those leaders. And I skyrocket to 25. The ability on the obelisk, I can flip this over and get four energy, but I'm going to hang on to that until I need it. And end of my turn triggers the event. And Tropic Reversal. This one scores the industry track and you're doing better than me on that. It's nine um, and you have no penalty for damage. So you're gonna get nine victory points and I am going to get seven. Then we're gonna bring out Raider Type D, which is one of the most dangerous Raiders in here. That is the Ion Storm. Okay, now the Ion Storm begins on the newly placed planet. So we will take the Ion Storm and we'll put it right there. Now that one, if it strikes your region, it's gonna damage every ship in that region. So we have not done a good job of cleaning up the, leader, the uh, raiders here. There's raiders all over the place. So Ion Storm's out. Now it's a special effect in turn order. Each player may immediately perform two repair actions. Uh, I have nothing that's damaged, so my repairs turn to victory points. So I get two points. And I have one ship damaged. My science vessel can move to the repair barge. And my, um, I have no, nothing else damaged, so I'm going to get one victory point. Okay, so entropic reversal has occurred. And now we reset the event track and it is your turn. All right, I'm gonna launch the Death Claw to the Trade Hub, collect mm. a leader, uh, trade two resources. I'm gonna trade two tactics cards for two credits. The Corrigan Smuggler attacks. Well, it strikes that is. Uh, looks like everything else is out of range. Um, I have a heavy cruiser, but I don't so have any I'm going to pass Escalation. I'm not going to jump in. I, I would have had to use this ability to get energy on my turn, and I didn't do that, so I can't jump. Okay. Um, and I pass Diplomacy. Battle prep, I get two energy. And one, two, three... Six. Uh, I'm not going to spend any energy, I think. So I'll roll two dice. Okay. And the Corrigan Smugglers rolling three. Six, four, three. I got six, three. Which means you lose. Which means I play. Means you lose. Perfect shot. What? And I have six, six, three. Ah, uh, it comes through with a perfect shot. Now, the Corrigan Smugglers can handle that, can't they? Right. They have a shield which is damaged, so we'll put a damage on their shield. My card is discarded. Okay. Um, I'm the victor. I advance on the supremacy track. In addition, I gain the prize for defeating the Corrigan Smuggler. That reward is uh, advancing on the commerce track one space. Oh. Uh, you're beating me on every track except for civilization. Which is odd since I'm usually very fond of civilization. But This makes me sad. But now I'm finished. I need, uh, I need some, I need some, something. I think what I could really use is a 
what I could really use is a trip to the Maximus field, which is where you are. Why would I go there? So I'm going to do a couple of things. So one, yes, I'm going to go to the Maximus field. I'm going to tick this up and I'm going to flip my obelisk and I'm going to gain four energy. So it's like charging up the obelisk. And I'm going to also get some modules. So I have a credit here and I have a titanium and I'm going to go for just the cheapest modules because I'm not resource rich right now. So I'm going to spend two energy, a titanium and a credit and I will acquire the petrofuel transformer and the aluminum smelter. Looks like that smelter comes damaged. Okay. I'm going to add these now to my tableau. So when I put the smelter on, I have to put a damage marker on it. Something you got to fix. And the petrofuel transformer there. Now that's going to move me up two tracks. I probably could have done this one at a time, which could have been interesting, but I'm going to move up the science track and that gets me a discovery token. So I get first pick of these precious tokens and you don't even know what's in here. You don't even know me. And uh, there's two here I really want. I want two of these. Can I just take two? <laughs> uh, this is the hard part. Choices. I'm going to go with this one. It might end up giving me what I want indirectly. And um, I'm going to move up the industry track there, which advances the event. So science, industry, and I'm going to go ahead and flip my discovery token and it allows me to get a free commerce module. And interestingly, I keep wanting to take the ones that are on the bottom and I think this is, oh, this one comes damaged. Yeah. The mercenary union is actually better for me because I can add it to my tableau and I can slot for kicks. I could slot a repair in there. I'm going to wait. I'm going to hold off on slotting a moon on there, but I have the option to do that later. Then, um, now that I've completed my action, oh yeah, move up the commerce track for my commerce module. Now it's about time for this thing to strike. Mm. I said it's about time for it to strike. But before it does, I can play this on my turn when I'm not in battle. I am going to scatter and I'm going to choose a region and move all ships from that region to adjacent regions. That ticks up the event and I will move you somewhere where you may or may not want to be. And here, what do you got left? You have no ships left. And then I'm going to move mine right here. Okay. Now, since I'm here and it's on my turn, I can scoop up that leader. And so then there's no strike. Then there's no strike there's because no ships in the active region, no ships in the active region, no raiders strike. And I call it done your turn. Okay, I'm going to use my Supremacy token to draw two Tactics cards. This token discard. Uh, it also gives me two points. Uh, I'm going to use my Faction power to discard a Diplomacy card to draw two Tactics cards. Thank you. And then I'm going to return to station. Uh, so how about first bringing back my science vessel? I'll activate my primary reactor for three energy. 
that's done. One ship. Uh, I'll pull back my Death Claw Fighter um, to gain a repair or ship build. Hmm, not sure. How about I gain two points and a repair? You also gain a repair. So we each, or no. I gain a repair from your action? You just move your marker oh. two spaces. Well, that's what I wanted. I wanted two <laughs> points. Okay. So I get, I get three points total. Okay, there you go. And then you repair your I get to repair module. this module, yeah. Okay, that's that module. Uh, I'm gonna slot a moon. That gives me a point because there's a slotting bonus on those modules. I'm gonna spend an energy to activate the titanium compositor, which gives me a titanium. Um, and then the, the moon bonus activates because I put a ship and or an energy onto the, uh, both sides of the moon. So I gain a credit and an energy. Uh, I'm gonna slot another moon. I'm gonna activate the module assembler. Just what? Spend two titanium and an energy nice. for a uh, industry module. How about the computer assembler? You're all that industry. Bumps me oh, yeah. up on industry and we reset that. And then I gained the moon bonus in between the two modules activated. And then I'll use an energy to activate the shipwright and I'll spend two, uh, two energy for a transport. I'll pull back this ship and develop. So I need three carbon. I'm using one carbon mm. and two credits. Or actually, I can save one of those credits because of the Corrigan The smugglers smuggler. are still out there. So I'm They're making everything cheap. A carbon and a credit. And then I need a leader. And then I need an observatory. Uh, I need an observatory card. So, I score one, two. Only two points right off the bat for this thing. Nice, I approve of those <laughs> two points. However, I also get a science track boost, which means... I'm curious if you're gonna take the one that I left in there. Let's see what the choices are. Hmm. Oh, you're, there's no way you're gonna take the one I was gonna take. I don't know. Uh, one of those is for two credits, and I, you already have two, four credits. You're, hmm. you're already rich. And I'll also use the observatory card pronto to take another discovery token. What? Uh, hmm. Maybe that one. Hmm. I think I already used my faction power. I'm looking at our track positions. Hold those. Like it's some kind of EKG, and you're you're like alive, and I'm almost flatlined. <laughs> I'm going to spend a discovery token to gain a civilization module. I'm going to take the science foundation. Okay. That bumps the pink marker up on civilization. We bring down new modules. And since it's still my pullback turn, I'll use my last remaining energy to activate the science foundation. And then I spend one resource to advance on the science track. And then I am there at level two for observatories. Wow, that makes your observatory worth more. And then I'm done. Uh, you... Discard. Holy smokes. I thought I was like all winning there for a minute. And now I just watched. That was like a master class in um, Tableau management. I'm going to... It's a little early, but I'm going to kind of Hail Mary and play the black market, which is play on your turn. Uh, when you're not in battle. Um, it's going to tick up the event marker, so I need to remember to do this at the end of my turn. The event's going to be happening. I'm going to... Oh, this is the wrong card. Not the black market, just kidding. You've never seen that before because this one doesn't tick up the event. It's deja vu. You remembered me playing a card, but it was the other card. It's... Okay, deja vu lets me shuffle the tactics cards that are in the discard pile and draw two of them. 
So I'm hoping some of these good moves we've already done will come back. Oh. This is in the discard pile. That's the one I'm going to draw. All right. So I'm going to draw two of these, and that's going to give me some more options. So you look out for my more options. All right. Okay. So that goes there. And these are going to get shuffled back in. You want to do that? Yeah. All right. And now the them. only card in the discard pile is Deja Vu. There you go. Oh, I do have some interesting choices, but I'm not sure if I'm going to go with any of these. It is my turn to return to station. Um, I have no ships in my station, in my launch bays, and that means that I get a free action to use an unoccupied Alliance base. I don't have quite good enough resources to do everything I would like to do. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and I only have Oh, I have three ships, but one's way over there. I'm going to use my ghostly presence to have my ghostly ship go to the Odessa field. That will be triggering the event. And that means we bring out the next new region. And I'm going to be buying modules or as we like to say, one module, because <laughs> that's all I can afford. So I'm going to spend this moon for a credit and a victory point. And I'm going to spend an energy as an additional resource. And I'm going to acquire the Machinist's Guild and advance on the Civilization track. Then I can't get any more cards because I can't afford any and so I'm going to be burning one of these this legion of heroes will go away I'll just put it on the bottom there and I'll slide these all down and that was my ghostly presence and my ghosts scoop up a leader they recruit this leader to their cause join us and then my ships get to pull back, including my science vessel. So, science vessel pulls back, and I'm going to take um, three energy. I like energy. We've been getting a lot of victory points from repairs in this game because we've been over repairing. Um, then. I get a, so I got three energy and a repair, and I have nothing damaged, which means that I get a victory point from that. Then I'm going to use my heavy cruiser in the next row, and I'm going to use it to activate my sky crane. You get a titanium. I get two titanium and a victory point. And then I'm going to slot this repair right over here. Yet another unneeded repair. Some games are just, everything's damaged. Not in this game, not today. All right. When I go here, I get an ice and a carbon. And then when I place an energy here, I get an ice, a titanium, and a repair. And the ice, the titanium, and again, an unneeded repair is a victory point. So now I'm swimming in resources, and now this transport comes back, and it will get me a credit. I had to burn that moon earlier to get that module, so I don't have another moon to slot there. So that is it. These energies are discarded. My ships come back to their launch bays, ready to go again, and then the event triggers. The event is the call of the obelisk. 
It is calling us and we are scoring supremacy. You score seven victory points and that puts you at 38. I will score five victory points. That puts me at 42. Raider type B comes out. Raider type That's B. the UFO Saucerian abductor. The Saucerian abductor is on the scene and it will immediately abduct two of our leaders. Hmm. So you choose your leaders out there anywhere and I only have two left. I have one here and one here. And they go on the card. And then we roll a die to see which nebula the saucer goes to. And it goes to nebula number two. Now this one can has... be dangerous because it has range two. It will strike things that um, if you launch within two of its location. All right, special effect. Each player recruits one of their leaders for many regions and draws a tactics card. I get hosed on that one because I don't have any leaders left. I just get a tactics card. All right. Okay. And the call of the obelisk goes back to the discard and the event marker goes back on the track. We're pretty close to the end game trigger, which we're playing the uh, kind of the standard game or short game of 50 victory points as our terminus. And that will be, um, if any play player reaches this, we each get one more turn, including the player who gets there or the player who um, triggers the end, whose turn it is when it ends. <laughs> yes. Or something like that. Uh, so, uh, my turn. It is. I'm going to discard a tactics diplomacy card to draw two tactics cards. You have done that like, what, five times, six times? It's a self-fueling cycle. Um, I hold six cards. I'm gonna launch to the Odessa field, which I haven't done yet. I take a leader um, and now I move up the event track and then I'll take the whole action here. Um, I'm going to spend a credit for the index extractor. That's damaged. And I'll spend a credit and a card. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. How about that one? Okay. So then I take logistics. Well, that's going to give me two advancements on the commerce track, which then bumps the event track. Oh, you're one away from the vault bonus, I see. Okay, uh, Raider strikes, I'll pick the Corrigan smuggler. Yeah. It's a bit easier to defeat. Um, and I've got a strong death claw with an adjacent dwelling. Uh, no one else is even on the board, right? So I'll go to my battle prep. I gain two energy. I'll go ahead and let me just spend both of them. So I'm rolling four dice or five dice. Mm -hmm. And they roll three. And I'm going to re-roll my ones and twos. Ooh. What? Gonna be close. Still gonna be close. We've got six, five, two for the Raiders. You need to roll a five or a six. Ah, oh, there it is. All right, and you got to reroll all those because of your targeting, right. and you got ended up with two sixes beating a six and a five. You have taken down the Corrigan smugglers who were just trying to bring us black market building supplies. And they did that. They did it well. <laughs> and now... And, and now they will do it no more. Yeah. Um, so it gives me commerce boost. Oh no, you get vault, that token! And then I get a supremacy boost and I take uh, the develop token. Okay, that token is a free development action, which means you get in the right position with a planet and you have the resources, you can build the development right away. Wow. And I'm and, done. And let's see, how many more planets left are there to develop? They're just three, but they're guarded right now by a deadly ion storm. That is interesting. Let's see what we can do. 
Man, I did not like that you got that. So um, better move my heavy cruiser in and get some good positioning here and get this moon. And I am going to just take the moon and then the raider I choose to strike won't be the ion storm. It'll be the Saucerian abductor, which has a range of two. So it flies in there and now I'm in battle against it. Escalation phase. Hmm. I will pass. What? You're warmongers. Yeah, I, uh... You, you have your ward enough? I, I think... In this case, my Deathclaw will be a Tableau Deathclaw. Okay. Instead of a combat Deathclaw. All right, you can disgrace your, your kind as much as you like, but uh, I am going to use... I'm gonna play a Risky Gambit, which is my Diplomacy card. If I win this battle, I advance one additional space on the Supremacy track. So let's win this battle. Now I've got a heavy cruiser. I have a development, which gives me a bonus weapons die. And then I have an adjacent development, which gives me another bonus weapons die. And I'm gonna throw in an energy. So I'm gonna roll maximum dice. I'm gonna roll six dice against, saucers get four. They're not slouches. Do they have any other special abilities? Four dice, that's it, no shield. Four dice, and if I beat them, I get to rescue my leaders. We're coming, leaders. They got a five, four. No targeting? I got no fives. I have nothing. You got a five. Your shield takes a damage? We lost. My shield takes a damage, but we now... You get your tactical ops. We face the sadness that I didn't get to go up two spaces on Supremacy. I do get my tack ops, which means I get to draw a card. Oh, that card could have won it. Okay. Um, we, we stay there. We stay there, just enjoying the company of the, uh, of the Saucerian Abductor. Okay. Um... I'm gonna play Desperate Repairs. Play on your turn when you are not in battle. Uh, gain one point for each damaged module I have, which is one. Perform one repair action. I repair my module. This tactics is discarded. Uh, I'm gonna do a launch with the aid of Ace Pilot, which I got again because you reshuffled it. Nice. So I'm gonna launch a transport to the Supremacy Planet. You designed this Take card, that didn't you? I did. And you played it twice in this game, didn't you? And so before the Raider Strike phase, um, I'm going to be there, and then I'm going to use my development token to develop, which will cost an ice, titanium, a credit, and a carbon for which I will spend a credit as well. Okay. You are building another mighty obelisk. Your obelisk isn't going to score as many points, though. It's only going to score, what, one, one point? One point. Because there's nothing adjacent. But I advance on the track. Uh, it's worth oh, more I should because take of how high you got. Card. Um, and I guess I will just hang on to that card for now. And hmm. uh, I'll also play... Um, this discovery token to draw two tactics cards. Okay. There you go. And then I will use my faction power to discard this diplomacy card to draw two tactics cards. There you go. And then I will play Harmful Nanites. Perform one repair, which just translates to a victory point. Uh, each opponent damages one of their modules. Uh, I do not want to damage one of my modules. You designed this card, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is discarded. Yeah, I hate it. Oh, I hate it when it's used against Direct me. conflict. No, uh, only I should get to play this one. Um, and then I'm done. All right. I had high hopes for this mercenary union, but I might just damage it now. You are done, huh? 
We aren't afraid of ion storms. We send our transport and we fly it straight into the ion storm. And we scoop up that moon. And I'll just go ahead and slot it. And when you slot it right there, you get two points. So I am six points away from triggering the end of the game. During escalation, now the ion storm only blows you up when it strikes, it didn't strike. So I'm going to move my heavy cruiser in and we are going to be blasting the ion storm. How about you? Um, you still the uh, Zodian fear mongers? I will pass on escalation. Okay. I have an adjacent development. I have five dice and I have targeting of two. Uh, the ion storm has four dice. I'm not going to take any chances. Never mind. I'm going to take my chances and I'm going to see what I get. So five dice, minimum roll of two. Six, six, six. You got it. Okay, Ion Storm is damaged, not destroyed. And that allows me to go up the Supremacy track, which gives me a two victory point bonus. And it allows me to go up the Science track, because that's what you get when you defeat the Ion Storm. I think I'm done. All right, uh, I can do this. I play. The black market. You didn't know I had that because I'd never revealed that previously. I play the black market and I'm going to get a card by spending two ice. I will acquire the customs office module, which is a civilization module. Okay. So okay. You're going to get a civilization. Okay. Boost. Before the modules are refreshed, I'm going to play heist. Play after an opponent gains a module before refreshing. At no cost, choose and gain one module of the same type. Mm. I'm going to take the Intergalactic Embassy. That was clever. Well, I got to the point on the Civilization track where my people have discovered great tactical skills and I get to increase my hand size to six tactics cards and I get to draw until my hand is full. So I am drawing three tactics cards and now I am quite content with my options. And you can go. Okay. I will launch the Lunar Explorer to the Nebula. I take this Nebula Moon uh, I immediately gain the benefit. I draw a tactics card and get a victory point. Um, and you could go there because your science vessel is range two. Yeah. And you had to move within two of your. From there. So fire. now I'll go ahead and pick which event I would like on top. That's probably going to be the last event. I'm going to I'm going to get to fifty here real quick. Hmm. I think I'll pick this one, and this goes on the bottom. This one goes on the top? Yep. This one goes on the bottom? Yep. Um, let's see, I hold five cards at the moment. I'm going to discard that moon to get a point and a tactics card. Hmm... Uh, I'll play Black Market, which bumps the event track to the last space. We bring okay. out a new region. Ooh, this is going to probably trigger the end of the game here. Then we need Science Moons. Anything else? Yeah, Before so I end. choose any available module and pay its cost, add it to my station. I'm spending an ice. And um, or I'm going to spend this two credit token. Um, so I have one credit as change. So an ice and a credit for the Ministry of Commerce, which is damaged. 
I go one more space on the civilization track. Okay. These are reset. I'll play strategic shift. Or that's so let's you draw more cards, right? Yes. So, uh, excuse me, let me just edit my last move slightly. I'm going to play power play. When I would advance on a track, civilization, I can instead advance on a different track, science, and gain two VP. Okay. This card is discarded. This card is also discarded. And I'm playing strategic shift, discarding two cards. So I draw two plus one, three cards. Uh, now I hold four cards. I'll discard a diplomacy card using my faction ability to draw two cards. I just feel like a dealer over here. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this I one's will gone. play Forgotten Moon. Play when you're not in battle. Claim one moon token from the discard pile. Let's hmm. see, where's the moon discard? All those. Hmm. How about this one for tactics and VP? And I'll spend that right now. Okay, and I will declare the end of my turn, I think. Except that I'll play Frantic Repairs, play when you're not in battle, perform two repair actions. I repair my module and get one point. Okay, and now we can go to the event. Okay, here it is. The event is... Lunar Rush! First we score Supremacy. You are much higher. You get 10 victory points for Supremacy. So that takes you all the way to 57. Then I'm going to score six minus one. I only get five points there. Then Raider Types S. Uh, S is the strikers. Swarming Raiders, which is the Strikers, and two of them come out. On one and two, Nebula. Okay, so here's Nebula one. Here's Nebula two. Special effect. In turn order, each player may claim one moon from a planetary region of their choice. If none remain, choose one from the discard pile. So, oh, it's my turn. So, mm -hmm. uh... <laughs> I'll take the tactics one. I was going to take the tactics I card. I thought you were going to take the repair one. No, I was going to take the tactics card. Um, the repair one is good for me right now, yes, because damaged modules count against you at the end of the game. So, yeah, I guess I am going to scoop that up. I don't know. I thought it, maybe I got real lucky on a cool tactics card. But I've got a decent hand here. We'll see what I can make out of it. And then it's your final turn, right? Okay, final countdown. I have a couple of very good moves that will probably not win me the game. But let's see what happens here. And then after I go, you get a final turn, because we passed 50. There are going to be no more events. We're done with events. And let's see what happens. So, my science vessel with a range of two uh, swoops over to the development office to build an obelisk right underneath this ion storm. Um, thunderbolts and lightning do not stop them. So this is good for ice. So I'll discard that for ice. And I have to pay the full cost because there's no more smugglers bringing me cheap stuff. And so I will be building an obelisk. Can you hand me an obelisk and an obelisk card? 
and I'll try to fit it in here with the uh, giant ion storm. And I have a leader for it. I'm going to score decently here because there's a lot of leaders here. So there's one, two, three, four, five leaders. And that puts me to 56. And then um, the ability of this is to get energy. Oh, I didn't advance on the supremacy yet. I gained supremacy. Still not keeping up with you. I'm going to go ahead and flip this and get the four energy from the obelisk. And then I'm not done yet. One of the main reasons I'm not done is because I'm within range two of the Saucerian abductor. And it flies over to the development office to see what I'm doing. And huh. That would be fun. Okay, battle breaks out, escalation. My heavy cruiser jumps into the battle. I spend an energy. We still desperately want to rescue those captured leaders. Maximus? Uh, I will pass on escalation. Okay, and now we get to diplomacy. Um, for diplomacy, I'm going to play clever positioning. Uh, if I lose this battle, I will gain my tactical operations twice. I'm going to actually slot my repair token in my tactical operations. So even if I lose, I will get a repair. Oh, but if I don't lose, I can't repair that one. Never mind that. I'm going to go ahead and ditch my repair token and repair this preemptively. And I'm going to accept whatever happens to my ships. Okay, I'm fighting against the Saucerian Abductor. I am going to spend one energy. I have two weapons for my science vessel. I have three weapons for my heavy cruiser, plus my energy from uh, diverting energy. That gives me six dice, and I just need not to have a bad roll. Six, four, three. They have a five. I win. Okay, I blow up the Saucerian Abductor. I take my two leaders. You get to rescue one of yours, or I kindly help rescue one of yours. The other one stays on the ship as it vanishes off over the galactic horizon, but there always is a chance that they can come back in games, but not this one, because there's no more events going to occur. When I defeat the Saucerian Abductor, I advance on the Supremacy Track. I get two victory points for that. And I got my leaders. Those are worth points also. So I'm pretty happy with that outcome. It is your final turn. All right. I'm going to discard a diplomacy card to draw two cards. I'm going to draw like 600 cards here. Uh, I'm going to make a stealth maneuver with a tactics card. Uh, I will put a transport in the science planet. Um, and I'm returning to station. And I just need to figure out exactly how to do it. So, first and foremost, I need two carbon. I hold one credit which can be used as that, so that I need another credit or a carbon. So one of these ships is going to need to develop. And I only have one other ship, so I need to pick between these three rows. So going here wouldn't be helpful on its own. So getting energy isn't going to help you right now, but what you need is a credit. Looks like you're Commerce modules are the way to go. Pretty much. So 
could do that. And then I'm going to play Unwelcome Visitor and use one of your modules in some way. What? That is, you are an unwelcome visitor. Stay out of my modules. I think there's a few ways to do this, but I'll just go with this. So I'm going to use Unwelcome Visitor to gain a Commerce track boost. Oh, you're going to use this? I didn't even get to use this. So I need to spend a resource such as this thing, uh, this card, yeah, to get a commerce boost. I'm pink, and I'll actually not develop. First of all, I'll go to the science foundation, spend a resource to gain one. Science track boost, and then I get to take a discovery token. Such as... Hmm, such as a science module. And I'll spend that immediately. I'll take an undamaged science module. Okay, that advances you on the science track again. And then... You don't have any energy. How are you going to run any of the rest of those modules? I, well, I have one energy. You do? Do you have community. an obelisk that you haven't tapped yet? Oh, yes. Oh, you do? That's the key to all this. All right, I tap that <laughs> and get four energy. Three. Four. I spend an energy on the intergalactic embassy. I'll discard a card for a science track boost. And I'll spend an energy. A point. So I spend a ship here to which get I haven't credit done yet. I was just having it sit there. I spend one of these energies here on the treasury to take a credit. Oh, you crushed it. Um, nice job. Spend an energy here to get a carbon and spend an energy here to develop. So carbon and a credit will get me those resources. I have a leader here. I build the last observatory. That Final scores two. Observatory. <laughs> they keep not scoring a lot on their own. Two points. two points. I bump to the end of that track. But it's worth and a I lot. take the token. So that got you to level card. three for your observatories and you have three observatories. And I'll uh, when uh, when did the Zodian warmongers become such experts in science? Three resources. Uh, yeah. Uh, ice, titanium, and apparently uh, vault scoring as well. Titanium. And yeah, you carbon. nailed it. And then I discard this for a card, and I discard this for a titanium and an energy. So I'm getting rid of all of, all of my to tokens and moons, since those technically don't count for the vault, just the resources themselves. Uh, cleaning up. And I think that's it. So now we can move to scoring, right? Holy smokes, that final turn was enormous. Okay, final scoring. Um, I thought you were gonna break into a battle here at the end, like and like out of desperation. Instead, you cleverly pulled off like one of the biggest builds and end games I've ever seen. Impressive. Well, thank you. That's it. Yeah. Okay. So tracks. Let's score these tracks. You got twenty on science. Uh, you got 30, 10 40, on industry, 57. 10 on supremacy, 10 on commerce, and 9 on civilization. That is 59 points by my so math. Maybe 117? 119. Right? 20, and a 7. 10, 10. Oh, I'm sorry. I looked at mine right here. Yep. So. 117. That's here. All right. 17 plus 8 is 25. 31, 40. I get 40 points total by my track positions. You way out tracked me. I'm only at 98. Can you put mine on 98? Wait, I say 39. 
Uh, let's see. I saw 15, 23, uh, 31, 40. Oh, okay. Then um, now we score developments and they score based on how high you got. Your observatories are all 10 pointers and your obelisk is worth seven. So you got 37 points there. My obelisk is only worth five. My two obelisks are worth five and my city is worth five. Mine are only worth 15 points because I didn't get as high on the tracks. So I go to 113. And 37 plus this is 40, 55. Wow. And okay. then damage on modules, zero for both of us. Zero for me, yep. Leaders on station. I, I have, have four. four. So that's not a deciding factor here. And then vault bonus. Um, the vault bonus is for position on commerce track and you get one point for each of your resources. I didn't get high enough on the commerce track. I don't get any points for my resources. Eight points. And then civilization modules. And I do have a civilization module. It only scores me three points. It would have scored me three points for each uh, factory I had, but I didn't have any factories. And you had one that scored for commerce modules? Two points for each commerce module, so that's six points. My final score is 120. Your final score is 173. Three. Very good game. impressive. Oh man, good game. The warmongers crushed the acolytes. <laughs> well, that's a good feeling. The Dark Star are very powerful. They are strong. Um, I've seen them. I've seen them crush opponents, and and I actually I don't feel like I was playing badly. I got two obelisks and a city. So I, yeah, that was really interesting. As my developments were low scoring when I played them, and, and then, then you and then you cranked up the tracks. I used the energy for science almost in a way, and I used the tactics cards for tactical things. Even though I was discarding diplomacy cards, I was using non-combat effects a lot. I hadn't seen. Um, the so way that you were really cycling the uh, diplomacy cards at a very high rate um, gave you a lot of options. Yeah, and it was, it's another way to do tactics besides mm -hmm. the civilization track. I, I had similar options too, and that just uh, they just didn't click together quite as well. I was all ready to do more stuff too. <laughs>